Well, welcome to Calvary Chapel Petaluma. I'm Pastor Zach, and we're so glad that you're joining us. One of the things that's really important to us is to study through God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. So right now we're in the book of Hebrews, and we believe that God wants to speak to us. So let's listen. You know, wondering how could we even come close to estimating the value of the women in our lives? How could we, how could we ever really calculate what they mean to us? Do we, do we even want for a second to begin to imagine a world without women in it? <laughs> Talk about a dystopian nightmare. That would be... Crazy. I was, I was actually reading about all of the ways that women have contributed to the world that we live in. And I don't know if you know this, but uh, so, so many incredible ways um, that women have contributed, not only to our lives personally, obviously, but, but to the world that we live in. Here's, here's a few names you may or may not know. Hedy Lamar was a beautiful actress. She, it's said, it's a rumor that she was... Uh, the inspiration behind the cartoon character Snow White. So she was famous in her day, but when the, when the war broke out, she wanted to do something to contribute. And so she and a partner of hers helped uh, invent a frequency hopping technology, which was used to guide missiles uh, in World War II. And now we use it every day because we wouldn't have Wi-Fi, GPS, or Bluetooth without... Uh, the technology that this this woman invented. Or there's Mary Anderson. Uh, She was in New York in the snow and all of the taxis that she called uh, were delayed and she was freezing cold. So she sat in a taxi and she invented windshield wipers. So every time you're in the rain or in the weather in the snow, you can thank a woman for that invention. Stephanie Kolek invented Kevlar. Treatments for malaria, automatic dishwashers, computer programming. Uh, Women have contributed in so many ways. My personal favorite, Melita Bentz. Anybody know that name? She invented coffee filters. (laughs) Very important. Keeps all of us running every day. It it fits that it was a mom that invented a way to make a better cup of coffee, right? So um, I guess really one way of looking at it is that Women are responsible for every great thing that's ever been done in the world that we live in, even the ones by men, because who brought them into the world, right? It was, it was women. It was moms who birthed them and raised them and poured into them and protected them and nurtured them and, and launched them out. And so really, you know, we owe an unimaginable debt to the women in our lives. And today as we celebrate and honor mothers, I want to look at the women of faith that are mentioned here in Hebrews chapter 11. We've been going through the book of Hebrews and there's women that are mentioned here in the hall of faith that, man, we want to pay attention to their lives and stories and their examples. So uh, let's read a few verses here in Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 11. It says this, by faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive. Even when she was past the age, since she considered him, that is God, faithful who had promised. And then skip down to verse 31. And by faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. So Sarah and Rahab are two women that are mentioned here in the Hall of Faith. But don't forget, again, all of the men that are mentioned in the Hall of Faith and the role that their mothers played. Some of them, we know their stories. Remember the mother of Moses? Moses, the one who would be used by God to bring about a great deliverance for God's people, and yet his mom uh, had to make that unimaginable sacrifice of putting her son in a little 
reed basket on the Nile River so that his life would be preserved in the dark days of Egypt that she lived. So there's women that are referenced here and mentioned by name, but, but what is it that the women that we read about, what is it that Sarah and Rahab have in common? It's, it's just two really simple things that I want to point out. And we've, we've already been uh, made familiar with these features or these attributes of faith earlier on. Because remember, we read in Hebrews eleven six that without faith, it's impossible to please God, that anyone who comes to him must believe that he is or that he exists and believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we know that these, these women are mentioned by name because they had this kind of faith. And this is what they share in common. Sarah, Rahab, as different as their stories, as different as their backgrounds, as different as the time and places that they lived, here's what they shared in common as women of faith. They believed that God existed and they believed what God said. Do you remember, do you remember Sarah's story, the wife of Abraham? who had to endure a husband who came home one day and said, God told us we need to move. And if she would have asked Abraham, it doesn't say this in the story, but if she would have asked Abraham, well, you know, where? What's the plan? Where are we gonna live? Have you looked on Zillow at apartments or places? What's the area like? Do you know that Abraham would have had to say to his wife, I have no idea. God didn't say where to go. He said, just go and we're gonna go out and, and God will show us the place as we go. And do you know that Sarah went along with that by faith? I mean, what other, way, what other way could you go along with that plan? Not just her faith in her husband, but her faith in God. She believed that God was calling them to a place that they had not yet known that he would show to them. And so she goes, and not only does she have to endure that, but she has to endure a husband who twice comes up with the ridiculous plan because he's afraid she's so beautiful that when they're in certain places, people are gonna kill him so that they can marry her. And so he tells her, hey, when we go into this town, tell them you're my sister. Do you remember this story? And Sarah goes along with it. And, and amazingly, God preserves her life in miraculous ways. He honors her faith despite her husband's lack of faith. And, and so much so that God gives kings dreams and her faith is honored in another place in Peter's epistle. But, but we know that Sarah was a woman of faith because she believed that God existed and she believed what God said. Ultimately, you know the story, Sarah believed that God would give her a son even though she was well past the age of having kids. I mean, well past the age of having kids, right? 99 years old, 100 years old. Sarah was, and, and it, it's not just that she was that old when she had a baby, but the, the baby that her heart desired, the, the, the son that her husband and her were longing for had been promised years prior to that. Some, some of you would know that sense of longing and maybe that pain of unfulfilled desire. Sarah knew that. And she had a direct promise from God that a very special son would be born to her. And yet she still had to wait. She still had to wonder. She still wrestled with doubt. Remember when the Lord himself visits Abraham and Sarah and she overhears as she's preparing the meal for these special guests, the promise being reiterated and she laughs. And so the Lord actually has this very personal interaction with Sarah it's the angel of the Lord, but, but many believe it was a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ himself. She has this interaction, Sarah, why are you laughing? And the Lord reminds her that nothing is impossible for God. And it says that Sarah, here in our text, right, we read it there in verse 11, she considered him faithful who had promised. Oh, at times she doubted, at times she laughed, at times she wavered, but ultimately her life was marked by the sense that God 
exists and I'm going to believe what he says. And Rahab, what about Rahab? What, what's her story? Well, you remember she was in the city of Jericho years and generations after the story of Sarah. She, she's amongst uh, the Canaanite people. The first place that Joshua would lead the, the armies of Israel into the land that God had given to them, they would find themselves face to face with the seemingly impenetrable walls of Jericho. And Rahab is, we're told here in our text, a prostitute living inside the city walls. But the spies that Joshua sends out, remember this story, they wind up in Rahab's house. She welcomes them in and she hides them from the guards that hear that some Israeli spies had gotten into the city. And she says to the spies as she sends them back out of the city safely, remember me and my family because she had heard of the God of Israel and she believed that he was the true and living God. She believed that God would do what he said, which was give his people this land. And so she said, remember me. And it says that her and her family were saved and preserved because of her faith. Not just a, a secret, private, hidden faith, but a faith that took action in the face of a dangerous situation. These are the women of faith that are mentioned here in Hebrews 11. They believed what God said and they staked their lives on it. And, and for the women of God here today, you know, we live in a very different day than Sarah, very different day than Rahab, and yet so many things are the same, aren't they? What does it mean to be a woman of faith in our day? I think it's, it's the same features, the same characteristics, and not just for women, but for men too. Who are the people of faith in these days that we're living? It's people that believe God, that he exists, and who believe what he says. People who are willing to stake their lives on what God has said. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a lot of confusion in our culture about what a woman even is. There's a lot of confusion in our culture about what it means to be a good mom or whether being a mother's even worth it. There's a lot of confusion in our culture at the moment around these things, but moms and ladies, I want you to believe today as we honor you what God says. I want you to believe as women of faith that God exists and that what he says is true. What God says about you, what God says about your identity, what God says about your role in the family and in society, what God says about the crucial calling that you have, the irreplaceable part in God's plan of redemption. I want you to believe what God says about the calling that he has for you as women of faith and women of God to bring in the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven. Ladies, you have a very, very irreplaceable role in bearing the image of God. And I think that's important to say on a day like today as we honor the moms and the women of faith in our church family on this Mother's Day. I asked a few of the, the women in my life uh, this week, hey, what, what feels important to tell moms and, and women on this Mother's Day? And they all, said, they all said it in their own unique way, but I could boil it down basically to this. They almost all said the same thing. We want to know that our work matters. We want to know that we've made a difference in our kids' lives and in the people around us. Because I, I don't know if you've noticed, but being a mom can be a thankless job. You don't get paid, there's no special awards or recognition. You're not often mentioned, not nearly as much as you should be. Days like today exist and 
They stand as a reminder that we need to honor the moms in our lives and the women in our lives every day. But it can be a, it can be a, a thankless job and it's not hard, I think, often to wonder as a mom, is what I'm doing really making a difference? Do people in my life really care? Is it even being noticed? And moms, you should leave here today hearing all of us say an absolute resounding yes. You matter to us. The ways that you contribute to our lives have made such a difference. In fact, maybe the reason we don't say it as often as we should is we don't quite know even how to say it. How could we possibly sum it up? How could we possibly estimate the value of the women in our lives or calculate all that you've done for us? <laughs> it's kind of funny because all of the moms that I talked to, they said, you know, I want to know on Mother's Day that, that my work matters, that it's made a difference. And on Mother's Day, I don't want to have to do any work. <laughs> I don't want to have to do anything. <laughs> I just want a relaxing day. I want to eat good food, but I don't want to make it. I don't want to be responsible for any of it. I, I just want to be celebrated and acknowledged. And all of that will go, I think, to communicate, yes, you matter to us. That's why this day is important. And again, you may, you may feel like no one notices. Zach, that's great for Sarah. That's great for rehab. Re, rehab. <laughs> Rahab. That's great for other moms, but no one's gonna remember my name. I'm not sure that the things that you're saying apply to me. I want you to see a really interesting part of what we call the hall of faith here in Hebrews 11. Would you look uh, with me beginning in verse... Well, well, we'll just pick it up in um, verse 34. And here you're gonna find a, a list of things that were accomplished by people of faith, great acts of faith, but, but the names are not attached. So these are, these are unnamed people here in, in the hall of faith. It says, they quenched the power of fire. They escaped the edge of the sword. They were made strong out of weakness. They became mighty in war and put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, sawn in two, killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy. Wandering about in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth, all of these though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. I think this is so beautiful because here are the unnamed people of faith and make no mistake, many, many of them are women. It says here directly that women received their dead raised again, but if you back up to verse 34, who escaped the edge of the sword? Isn't that the story of Esther? when she went and risked her life to see the king? Who were made strong out of weakness? Wasn't that Ruth? When she journeyed with Naomi to a land that wasn't hers, believing God. Who became mighty in war? Wasn't that Deborah? In the story of Judges, when none of the men had the courage to step forward? Who put foreign armies to flight? Do you remember the story of Jael who drove a tent peg through Sisera's head as he slept in her tent? Make no mistake, these aren't just the descriptions of the exploits of the men of faith. There are women 
all throughout these pages. But, but here's what I want you to, to know. And you see their suffering in this description, right? They didn't just conquer and have victory, but they, they suffered and endured. Look at what they accomplished, but also look at what they had endured. And yet, we don't know their names, but God does. It's as if God is saying through his spirit here in Hebrews 11, I remember every story, everything done by faith in my name, every person, every man, every woman who's walked with me by faith, whether experiencing great victory or whether going through a life of suffering and tragedy, God says, I remember, in fact, earlier in the book of Hebrews, it says that explicitly. God says, I will not forget your labors of love. He remembers and he rewards those who walk with him by faith. And I just wanna tell you today that God knows and remembers your name. God knows the things that no one else will ever recognize and sees what you've done by faith. And he is faithful to what? Reward those who diligently seek him, those who continue on day by day, week after week, year after year by faith. Would you look at me with me at verse 39 because it says something here that I think is really worth noting and appropriate on this Mother's Day. Because of all the people, named or unnamed, of all the things that they accomplished and endure. Listen to what it says here in verse 39. All these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. That might not sound very encouraging to you, but it sounds really encouraging to me to read that. Because I would think what the, what the hall of faith this portrait, this, this hall, if you would, of the portraits of the people of faith, I would think that it says because of their great faith, they received what was promised, right? But it doesn't say that. It says though they were commended by God, they did not receive what was promised. And the reason is because God's timing and plan had not come to fruition at the times that they were living. They got to participate. They got to contribute. They got to walk with God in faith. But the ultimate fulfillment of, of what God was gonna do was not gonna happen in their lifetime. But how encouraging is that for you and for me who are tempted to think, okay, if I walk with God in faith, if I pray my prayers, if I cry out to God, if I be as faithful as I can be, he's gonna fulfill all of his promises to me and my family in my lifetime. But nowhere does it say that God will do it in our timing. And so this should be a huge encouragement that God has not forgotten you. God has not forsaken you. God is not indifferent to your prayers and to your cries. These women of faith in Hebrews 11 believed in the promise though they did not receive what was promised and that's why they're here. Because they kept trusting God to the very end whether they saw it or not in their lifetime. You know, I can't think of a better example of someone who walks in this kind of faith than a mother. Someone who pours and pours and gives and serves. Whether or not you see the results that you're wanting to see in your lifetime. And this is how God wants all of us to walk. This is what God has called all of us to do, to continue to pour out, 
to trust him, to love and serve others, whether or not we see the results, whether or not it seems like it's having an effect right away, we continue to pray, we continue to walk solidly and be present and show up and pour out because why? We believe God. We believe what he's promised. And so no wonder, no wonder God commands us to honor our mothers. It's almost like he's saying, if you, if you wanna see an example of what this looks like in everyday life, look at your mom. So many of us, I think, would have to admit today, ah, we just took it for granted. It's just always who mom was. She was always there always giving. I know that's not all of our stories, but that's, that's what we think of when we think of moms. And so God says, this is the first commandment with a promise. Honor your father and your mother. Do you know the difference between a blessing and a promise? Sorry, do you know the, the difference between a blessing and a miracle? Have you ever thought about the difference between a blessing and a miracle? A miracle is a certain kind, a very unique and unusual kind of blessing. And I guess you could say that it's a miracle that God ever blesses any of us because we don't deserve it. But a blessing is the result of walking in obedience to God's commands. A miracle comes out of nowhere. It's just the, the extra special, unusual, unique grace of God in certain moments of our lives. But the blessing is the path of God where he has already commanded good if we will walk in it. So, so think of it like, like gravity. Think of it like aerodynamics, these laws that God has put in his place. And if we'll live in right relationship to them, right, it, it's good. We experience the good in life when we obey the laws of gravity. We experience amazing things in life when, when we live in the right relationship to the laws of aerodynamics, right? My son and I flew back from Colorado uh, last night. It's amazing that we could be in Colorado just a few hours ago and be here today because of the laws. There's blessings in walking in the ways of God and that's, that's what we mean by blessing. So what does God say? The first commandment that I have already said there is a blessing. It's not a miracle. It's not magic. It just is. If you will walk in this path, if you will honor your mothers and the women in your life, you will be blessed. Rather than fighting upstream or swimming against the current, if we'll just go with God's ways, he's already commanded the blessing. Listen to what it says in Psalm 1611. It says, you make known to me the path of life. And in your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. That's the blessing of God. God, you've made known the path and as I walk in it, you have already commanded the blessing. Now don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying we earn the blessings of God by obeying. But I'm saying as we hear what God says, how he's made us, how he's created the world that we live in to work, as we live in right relationship to it, what is there? Life, fullness of joy, pleasures forevermore. This is the first commandment with a blessing. A blessing. Honor your mothers. So guess what we get to do today? Just be confident in God's blessing. Because we're honoring the moms and the women in our lives today. This is the path that he has set for us. Not just today, but every day. Not a miracle. There are miracles. We thank God for those blessings. But the everyday 
blessing of walking by faith and walking in obedience to what God has said. Moms, today, ladies, today we honor you and we celebrate that God has blessed the path that you walk on as you walk by faith in obedience to what he said. And everybody else, the rest of us, God has promised a blessing as we honor our moms and as we walk in his ways. Let's pray. Sometimes, Lord, we can make things complicated that are just really simple. Lord, what we want to bring to you week after week as an offering of worship is a life lived by faith in obedience to what you've said. And with so much confusion all around us, with with so much of a failure to acknowledge that you are God, that what you have said is true, that as we walk in your paths, this is the fullness of joy. As we walk in your ways, this is the life where we experience your blessing. Lord, would you help us not to swim against that current? Lord, would you help us to not participate in the project going on all around us of suppressing the truth that it says in Romans 1? But may we believe what you said, that your words are truth And life, may we walk in the paths that you have made known for us. And Lord, I pray as as we come week after week to offer lives lived in faith in obedience to what you've said, that we would experience your blessing. Lord, we need your blessing. We want your blessing. We thank you for your generous willingness to continually pour out your blessings in our lives. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've revealed. And thank you for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for listening. And we always want to encourage ourselves to respond to God's word, not just to listen. And that can look like so many different things. Maybe grabbing your journal or praying for a little while, or maybe going on a walk with a friend and processing what God's speaking to you. We know that God wants to speak and and we want to hear and digest what he's saying so that it actually changes our lives. That's what God does. And God's always doing a great work and we get to be a part of that. It's such a privilege. So thanks again for being here. We hope you have a great week.